Well, historically in the U.S., people of color have been excluded from the great outdoors in what's known as the nature gap. Well, in tonight's segment of Facing Race, Natalie Swaby looks at how Washington State is pushing for justice outdoors. I started out as a rock climber. Locking in and taking the first step. That's how Sophia Dannenberg approaches adventure sports like mountain climbing. Well, you're not the first famous person I've bladed. <laughs> but as a person of color, she's an outlier in the outdoors. You were getting started. Did you see people that looked like you out there on the mountain? No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, not just climbing. I mean, not skiing, not hiking, like nowhere. Dannenberg loves the outdoors so much. That's why she moved to Seattle. But just like everywhere else she lived, she noticed a stark lack of diversity in outdoor recreation. This recent report from the American Alpine Club shows Dannenberg is right. Few people of color are accessing the outdoors. They found of the more than 7 million climbers in the United States, only 1% are black. Take Mount Everest, for example. Earth's highest mountain above sea level stands at more than 29,000 feet. Almost seven decades ago was when the first confirmed climbers triumphantly made it to the top. Since then, there have been more than 10,000 successful summits, but fewer than 10 of those climbers have been black. Dannenberg is one of them. The biggest challenge with Everest is the altitude. In 2006, Dannenberg became the first African-American to reach the summit of Mount Everest. The fact that you're there, are you thinking at all I'm the first African-American to do this. I was just mostly in disbelief that I had made the summit at all. Diversity experts tell us that this is another example of how systemic racism plays out in our society. In outdoor recreation, it's traditionally been a predominantly white space. Many adventure sports take money and time that not all people of color have had the luxury to invest in. You know, the equipment's expensive, permits can be expensive. Dannenberg says it cost her more than $34,000 when she climbed Mount Everest. And when she made history making it to the summit, it didn't even make the headlines of her hometown paper in Connecticut. The fact that my local newspaper in Hartford wasn't interested meant that, like, it didn't really get out. Eventually, Dannenberg's Everest expedition did receive more attention as she kept sharing details about the heart-pounding journey. I was by myself, and so I hired a personal Sherpa. We got trapped there in a storm and needed to dig our way out. They have these large sort of towers of ice called Seracs. A few days after I took this photo, the Serac actually did, did collapse and killed three Sherpas. So we're just like passing like one party after another and eventually got so far ahead of everybody that we couldn't see anyone else. They found themselves alone at the top, savoring a successful summit. You look very happy and smiling. <laughs> Dannenberg breaking barriers is something that caught the attention of Charlotte Gard, the program director at Northwest Avalanche Center. Wintertime recreation has been this largely white dominated space. And, and so it is something to be celebrated that more people like Sophia are paving the way for more people to get involved and to lowering barriers to access because that's, that's why it's been a white dominated space. Northwest Avalanche Center has been forecasting mountain weather for the public since the late 70s. Black Lives Matter! But after the murder of George Floyd, as leaders in the outdoor community, they realized they had work to do. Diversifying our board of directors, hiring and supporting the diverse workforce. Including issuing a statement about their dedication to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think just recognizing that non-action is action. In order to be a force for good, you have to be proactive. It's part of the reason why I actually talk about my Everest climb. I realized maybe a decade or so ago that there were young climbers um, who were taking inspiration from what I did. And they were activists. Like, they were out there. They were pushing the industry. They were starting, like, groups and organizations. Lowering. Individuals like Dannenberg and groups like the Northwest Avalanche Center are chipping away at the inequity. I think the important thing is just to get out there and try it. They're speaking out and changing the outdoor culture to open doors for everyone. So this spring, a group of 10 climbers will attempt to become the first all-black climbing team to summit Everest. They call their mission Full Circle Everest Expedition, and they are now working to raise awareness about bringing more diversity to outdoor recreation. If you have a story idea you'd like to share with the Facing Race team, want them to look into, just send us an email to race at king5.com.